Hi everyone, this is Chef Lisa with Gourmet Away LLC, and I'm excited to be presenting at the Center for African American Health Collaborative Black Health Summit. Our session tonight is on Not Your Grandmother's Soul Food. So we know that we have traditionally eaten soul food, things like greens and macaroni and cheese and fried catfish and fried chicken, but we've chosen to prepare those in not necessarily the healthiest ways. So my hope tonight is to prepare three traditional dishes with a little bit of a remix, but still have them delicious as well as healthy. So our menu tonight is going to be mac and cheese remix with a nice little twist. We're gonna do some collard greens and we're also gonna do a remix of fried catfish. So here we go. Okay, so our first recipe for tonight is going to be a remix on mac and cheese. So you know, mac and cheese and traditionally the way that we prepared it, lots of cheese, lots of milk, um, just lots of not so great things. And so what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm going to do a butternut squash mac and cheese. So this is, it's fairly simple. Um, it does take a few little steps to get it, but I have prepared this before and I can guarantee you, this is a delicious alternative to your grandma's mac and cheese. So I have some macaroni here. I've already prepared it. You can use whatever macaroni you prefer. If you like, uh, if you need to do gluten-free or whole wheat, please do so. What's in this container is butternut squash. So I cut up the top part of a butternut squash into cubes and I um, put it in some water and I actually added some vegetable broth to it just to give it a little bit more flavor and uh, as well as some garlic and I just cooked that for about 15 to 20 minutes so that the, um, uh, it, it softened. And so this is really what it looks like. And also in here is a, um, a bit of uh, um, cashews that have been soaked in hot water for 30 minutes. So this will add some additional flavor. I have some lemon juice and some Dijon mustard. I also have uh, some seasonings here. So there's some salt, some garlic powder, some black pepper, and some smoked paprika, as well as a little bit of nutmeg. And then the final thing um, is a little bit of panko breadcrumbs. And so what I'm gonna do close to the end of this dish is I'm gonna uh, heat this up in the skillet just to get it a little bit brown and that's gonna be the topping. And then when you prepare your, um, your butternut squash, there's gonna be a little bit of liquid left. And so one of the things that you wanna do is just keep that liquid. I kept it right here. And once you start to finish up the mac and cheese, you wanna make sure that it has the right consistency. So this particular um, butternut squash uh, with the uh, garlic as well as the, um, the soaked uh, cashews is gonna go in my food processor and then we'll see what that smooth uh, texture looks like. Okay, so we just finished blending um, the cooked butternut squash, the garlic, uh, as well as the soaked cashews. And so this is sort of what we would call our cheese sauce. So it's nice and creamy, right? And I have a little tasting spoon here, I'm gonna just taste it. I usually like to season stuff as you go. Hmm, that's nice. So that's ready. And um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our dish together. And so I have a little pan here. But what I'm gonna do first is put a little bit of the macaroni into um, the bowl. And you guys will have the recipe for this. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the cheese sauce to there. Well, you know, the baked cheese sauce, the butternut squash. 
okay? And you just keep adding, you know, because you're really trying to get it to have the texture of what we would traditionally call mac and cheese or, or like a creamy mac and cheese. It's not like a baked macaroni and cheese, but it's a mac and cheese. You can see it there. And then I have my seasonings, which I told you about before, which is the salt, the garlic powder, um, the black pepper. We have some, um, actually some turmeric in here. And the turmeric is to give you a little bit of the yellow color that you're used to in addition to the butternut squash, okay? You can start to see it's coming together. And then we're gonna add just a little bit, I think it's like a fourth of a teaspoon of uh, Dijon mustard, right? And it's coming together, as you can see. And then we'll put uh, just a bit of uh, lemon juice in there. So we're just adding uh, additional flavors to the mac and cheese, right? Um, you know, because it's important when we eat that we really enjoy the food that we eat. And, um, you know, food can still taste good. So I have a pan here. And what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to just pour this mac and cheese in here. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And the last part of this that I wanna do is I want to do a little bit of um, uh, breadcrumbs on top and I'm using the panko breadcrumbs. So this is my little olive oil mister. Put your, your oil in here and it cuts down on the amount of oil you use. I'm just gonna put these breadcrumbs in here and we're gonna cook them. We're cooking them on, kind of on a high heat now. I'm actually gonna finish this mac and cheese in the oven. But what I'm really trying to do, and I have a little bit of seasoning left, I'm gonna put that on top. Um, so we'll let that cook for just a bit. And I'm gonna go ahead on and taste this mac and cheese just to make sure mm, that's tasty. Um, that's good and it doesn't need any more seasoning. And the breadcrumbs are starting to brown a little bit. I'm not gonna totally brown them because they're gonna finish browning in the oven. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this off. And then I'm gonna just um, use this spoon to I'm gonna spread this out a little bit. Just gonna use this to top my mac and cheese. So this will give you a little crunch, right? In your mac and cheese. Okay. Okay. So that's what it looks like right there. And I have this on um, 350. I'm gonna put this in the oven for probably about 10 minutes. Okay, so next we're gonna move to the next dish, which is going to be uh, the remix on our collard greens. Okay, so we're gonna get started on our collard greens now. Traditionally, with our collard greens, we have used um, fat back or uh, ham shanks, you know, to, to add a lot of flavor to the greens. And then we tend to cook the greens sort of all day. So all of the great nutrition that is in greens, we tend to cook it out. So this recipe is definitely a remix. I would say another tip, even if you're gonna do uh, greens the way you would traditionally do them, instead of using um, you know, ham shanks or ham or pork products, maybe just some smoked turkey. Uh, that gives the greens good flavor, but this is gonna be a quick recipe on preparing some delicious tasting greens. So what I did is these greens are cut really super thin, right? You can see they're super thin. And the reason is, you know, greens can be fairly harsh 
and you want to make sure they're cooked enough so the reason why i cut them really thin is so it won't take very long to cook them i have a roasted red bell pepper and i actually roasted this myself in the oven i usually put it on uh, 375 usually on just a baking sheet and I let the red onion get really blistered and then I put it in a brown paper bag peel the skin off and then cut it into slices you of course can buy this in the grocery store much more expensive we've got some uh, red onion as well as some garlic garlic has lots of good properties and it always adds good flavor and then we have some, these are artichoke hearts. So these are uh, quarter artichoke hearts. So that'll give a little bit more flavor. And then the last thing that I have is some, um, this is some white wine vinegar. You could also use um, lemon juice for flavor. Now, um, greens tend to be a little bit bitter. And so one of the things that I have here that I've been using in a lot of my cooking is called monk fruit. And it's a sweetener and a much better sweetener than using sugar. And so I might throw a little bit of that in here. And then for seasoning, this is actually one of my favorite seasonings. It's called Goyo uh, Adobo. And this particular seasoning has a lot of, you know, good stuff in it. It's got black pepper, oregano, and turmeric. So, you know, we, turmeric has lots of good properties. So what I'm gonna do, my, my skillet is getting really, really hot. You can see it's starting to smoke. So I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. Turn it down so you don't wanna burn anything. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna just spray. So like I said, we're not using a lot of oil in these recipes. I'm just gonna do a little mister here. This thing you can buy in, um, I think I found this one at um, Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, so you can see it's really smoking. So we're gonna start with our onions, right? To start the layering of flavors. So we're gonna let those cook. Mm, it's smelling really good. Now, usually you cook your onions first. Um, to impart flavor. And then the garlic you usually add a little bit later because our garlic will easily burn. So we're gonna let that cook just a little bit. You can see it's, um, it's starting to cook. And then we're gonna add, I'm not gonna add all this, I'm gonna add a little bit of these red bell peppers. Mm. And they smell so good, even better than just uh, cutting them up. Uh, this kind of roasted flavor adds uh, more flavor to your dish. And then we're gonna put a couple of our artichokes in. You guys can probably hear the sizzle going on here. Okay, it's coming together. All right, and now we're gonna add the garlic right before we add the collard greens. So then just let that cook really quick. Everything is starting to brown up. And then we're gonna put in our collard greens. I'm gonna do part of these, because I might do a little bit later, okay? And you see everything is just starting to saute, right? So once you've gotten your ingredients together, uh, if you have everything all prepped, you know, this is the easy part. Uh, doing a skillet of, uh, of these collard greens. So it's not waiting all day. This is something you can come home and just throw in the skillet. If you prepped your stuff maybe the night before and you had a long day at the office, uh, you can just mix this up, okay? So I'm gonna put a little bit of seasoning. I know that these need some seasoning. I'm not gonna put a lot, just a little bit. Let that cook a little bit more. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of vinegar. I always put vinegar in my greens. Or you can use lemon juice to help with some of the bitterness as well as just a little bit 
I'd say not even a quarter of a teaspoon of the monk fruit. Okay, it's like something fell. Okay, so these are actually ready. I am going to take a little taste. Mm. Mm. Those are good. Really good. So we're going to get this plated and then we are going to finish up our last dish, our catfish. Okay, so we've got our mac and cheese in the oven and our collard greens have been sauteed with our artichokes and roasted red bell peppers and uh, red onion and a little bit of garlic. And so what we're going to finish up with is the fried catfish. Okay, so I have a small fillet of catfish. I also have some yellow mustard. I don't know if you guys have used yellow mustard in your, um, on your catfish before, but I understand this is something that Pierre's used to put on his catfish at Pierre's Supper Club. So I've tried it and I actually never ate catfish until I went to Pierre's Supper Club. So. Um, and then I have a mixture. This is a breading mixture of um, like Italian breadcrumbs. I have some cornmeal in here, some onion powder, some uh, chili powder, some paprika, and uh, some salt. So this is my mixture. So what I'm gonna do, and I've got my skillet starting to heat up. This time I'm gonna use a little bit of oil, not a whole deep frying, but what we're planning to do is get the mustard on, put the breading on, and then we're gonna uh, saute uh, the fish on both sides, and then we're gonna finish in the oven on 350. And for fish, you know, just so that you don't overcook it, I know sometimes people like their fish extra crispy, but if you want your fish perfect, if you have a uh, thermometer for your uh, temperatures, you wanna cook your fish right to about 145, okay? So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna put a little bit, maybe not more than two tablespoons of oil. And the oil I'm using today is a sunflower oil, but you could use, I like to use um, grapeseed oil uh, when I'm cooking uh, things like fish. It doesn't have a lot of flavor to it. I have a little brush here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna brush the fish with the mustard, okay? And then I'm gonna put some of the seasoning on it. The breadcrumbs and the cornbread and all the good seasonings on it. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn it over because we want it to be seasoned on both sides. Okay. So we'll do a little mustard on this side. Okay, so this is very simple, right? I like I like to make my my mixtures and my you know rubs and everything ahead of time, and you can make enough of it so that you don't have to do this every time you decide that this is a recipe that you want to uh, try again. Okay, so there it is, right? Very very simple. Everybody can see it, and so what I'm going to do is you can probably hear the little sizzle there. I'm gonna turn that up just a little bit because what I want to have happen is I want this to brown very quickly. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time with this. And this particular fish is very small, so it's not gonna take a lot of time. So I have my oven on 350 and I'm gonna let this get brown. You wanna take a look at it, don't let it go for too long. And you wanna turn it over. So I would say probably about two to three minutes on each side, turn it over, and then you got two to three minutes on the other side. So we're gonna let this fish um, brown on both sides, and then we're gonna check on our mac. Okay, so I checked on the mac and cheese, and I decided to turn the broiler on because I want it to be nice and brown. And this side of the fish, I think is ready. So we're gonna just do a little flip on it. I want you to see what it looks like. There we go. So we're gonna let that go 
just for a couple minutes. Um, and then that's going to finish up in the oven. I am going to check this mac and cheese because I definitely don't want it to burn. Yeah, there it is. Then I'm gonna change that back to 350. So, so there's the mac and cheese. I'm gonna just show you guys while that's still heating up. Uh, I got a little bit of brown on there, but there it is. There's the mac and cheese. just turn this fire off and while that fish is finishing up in the oven what I'm gonna do is start to plate all right so everything has been prepared I'm about to pull the catfish out of the oven nice crispy catfish and uh, I'm gonna plate it and so everybody can see what the finished meal looks like So here's the crispy catfish, right? Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plate some mac and cheese first. So let me just show you guys, right? Hopefully you can see that. And this is the mac and cheese, and I'm gonna put it right in the center. I wanna make sure you can see those nice uh, bread crumbs. So you got a little mound there. And then we're gonna take our crispy catfish, and we're gonna put that sort of plated on the side of that mound of um, mac and cheese. And then we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of our collard greens with roasted red bell pepper and um, artichokes. Okay, so here's our plate of not your grandmother's um, soul food. And just to remind you, we've got the mac and cheese in the center and the mac and cheese, our cheese base was made with butternut squash um, as well as some soaked uh, cashews. And we got a little bit of uh, crumble on top, which is just some uh, cooked um, panko breadcrumbs. And then on the left here, we've got um, some greens, right? Thinly cut greens with some roasted red bell peppers as well as some artichokes sauteed, very simply seasoned just a little bit. And on this side, we've got the catfish, which is not your grandmother's fried catfish. And with this catfish, we put a little bit of mustard on both sides of the catfish as well as our seasoning blend. And then we pan sauteed it in just a little bit. In this case, I use sunflower oil, but you could also use uh, grapeseed oil. And then we cooked it on the other side and then we finished it off in the oven. So there it is. So I hope that you enjoyed the demonstration of Not Your Grandma's Soul Food. And I hope that you're able to try the recipes. Uh, we're gonna have them on my website. Uh, you'll see a link above that tells you uh, where you can go and download those uh, recipes. I hope that you enjoy them. Uh, please reach out and let me know uh, what you think. Um, if you'd like to get more information uh, about Gourmet Away, you can uh, find me on the website at www.gourmetaway.net. You can also find me on Facebook at Chef Lisa GA. And I also have a Facebook group called Crushing It in the Kitchen with Chef Lisa. And I established that during um, 
the height of COVID-19 and started posting videos and lives. Uh, and so I have a group of folks that follow. And so we put recipes up and photos of food and, and all that good stuff and provide tips. So if you're interested in that, you can also follow me there. If you just go and join the group, I'll let you in. And then you can also uh, find me on Instagram at Chef Lisa GA. So again, thank you so much for the Center uh, of African American Health and all that you do in supporting our community around health. And I really do appreciate being with you.